got involved with music at a very young age because my father, who is a musician as well, uh, would perform and play and I would he'd always be listening to great music and, and jazz and classical music. So I remember hearing Miles Davis for the first time. My father played the trumpet, so I always appreciated hearing that instrument. And uh, eventually my dad gave me a, a trumpet, just kind of a natural thing as I got older. I realized I just had this kind of a natural ability from you know my family. I've been doing music stuff like as far back as I can remember. Music was just part of my life. And so as the kids were, were growing up, they were exposed to that environment of music all the time. And we just did that all the time. That was life. Doug picked it up more because he just had that natural gift. But Doug, he just loved it. I graduated college in 2004. My girlfriend at the time, she got a job in Newport, Rhode Island, working for the Astor's Beachwood Mansion. And that was a living history museum where they had music and she was the musical director. So as a tourist, you'd come see the house and see the music and everyone would be dancing and singing and as if it was the 1890s. Miss Eileen Prose and Mr. Timothy White, Boston, Massachusetts. I was two weeks from heading to Miami to do a, a cruise ship for Carnival and she called me up and said, hey, would you like to sell tickets at this mansion I work at? And I said, well, I have this cruise ship gig. And in my mind, it was like, do I want to play trumpet every day of the week on a cruise, which to me sounded great, or sell tickets at a front desk of a mansion I've never heard of in a town that I wasn't very familiar with at the time. So I actually asked my trumpet teacher, and he said immediately, move to the East Coast. And he just, his three words were network, network, network and that led to the upright bass player that was in the band that I led called me and said there's a position available in this band Room Full of Blues which is at the time was like a 40 plus year old internationally known touring band and said they need a trumpet player and I got the job. I went everywhere all over the globe in my first two months I was like this is awesome. I'm like I made it and then just from there on out it just kind of got nuts. <laughs> I was with Roomful of Blues from 2008 to 2018, 10 years. They were the original Blues Brothers band. Uh, for those that have seen the Blues Brothers movie, Stevie Ray Vaughan's highest selling record was live at Carnegie Hall and Roomful was the backing band. So they had a lot of notoriety. They were like the grandfather of the blues. Being in that band, it opened a lot of doors and channels for me because I was the youngest by, I would say, at least 15 years of everybody in that band. I'm a go-getter, and so I was like always doing things to kind of get them out there, and and because of that, people started seeing me a lot as the roomful guy, and that led to me getting uh, to play with Victor Wainwright and the Train, uh, his this guy from Memphis, and I was hired to be a part of their horn section. In 2018, we did a record. I think it was just titled Victor Wayne Right in the Train and got a lot of attention. And then sure enough, we got the word that we were in the ballot for the Grammys. And I was living in Los Angeles at the time. I remember I woke up and had like 38 text messages. What is going on? They said, congratulations about the Grammy nomination. And I'm like, is this a joke? I didn't know if it was like people messing with me. And sure enough, I actually called Victor and I said, is this for real, did we get nominated for a Grammy? And he said, yep, we did. It's too late to start the day. I'll play, sing, and holler. Sunday morning, we flew out to LA and we're sitting at the Grammy Awards. We're changing in the van, putting on our tuxedos, and here we are at the Grammys with the best musicians you know, around the world. So it was pretty cool. to Appleton in 1996. So I was a freshman in high school. My dad was the pastor at the Methodist Church in Appleton. We moved here from Minneapolis, so it was like, and we were born and raised in New Jersey, Trenton, New Jersey. So we went from like extreme city, big population to 
a town of 1,200 people. Even as a young freshman in high school, it was like, it was, I don't want to say the word culture shock because it wasn't, but it was just like, cool. So the small town mentality was so refreshing because you get to know everybody. Everybody knows you and you know everybody. Tim, it's Doug Wolverton. Recognize that. We're I doing a, a interview for the concert I'm performing down at the pavilion. And It's absolutely possible to, in your own meaning of success or definition of success, to make it no matter where you live. And it's a great question about success and, and can you make it from a small town? And the answer is yes. I had the support of like the practice rooms or Mrs. Omelette at the school to like say, yep, you guys want to do a jazz band, here we go, we'll, we'll make it work. But it also took my determination and dedication of practice. It doesn't matter where you are, it's, it's always what you put into it and you get out of anything you put into it, the amount that you put into it. It was something he was always interested in, so it wasn't about, you know, well, well let's, let's teach this kid how to do music. And because he had a natural gift, he was able to kind of be a, a bit ahead of other people with his ability to, to kind of improv on things or embellish the notes. And, and as a growing youngster playing an instrument, I was always telling him, you know, well, practice, practice, practice. My dad was a huge um, factor of being and around music and starting to love music. So today we're playing uh, over in the park as we uh, played with Bob's big band. To be back in Appleton to perform uh, at another local show, it's exciting to be back where I started out. So to be able to come back and have the, the treat and bonus of being able to perform with my father was always just something I've always loved doing, and it's been really fun to come back and bring it back full circle. Sure. Yeah, thanks, Dad. That's what it is. That's Dale. To do a father-son thing is, is, is really very touching. I got a phone call once from uh, a management company and they said that they are the management company for Aretha Franklin and they said she's performing and she needs a horn section. Would you be interested? So I'm like, of course. We didn't get time to rehearse the show. We basically were told we're going to sight read the concert and now you go from high school where I really couldn't read music and then college which is where I was learning to read music to now I'm performing with Aretha Franklin and I have to sight read, which means never seeing music flip it open, I have to play it perfectly. And the coolest part about that show, besides performing with Aretha and hearing her amazing voice and piano skills and all this stuff, was it was her birthday. And I remember her coming out of her dressing room in this amazing fur coat and I got to play her personally happy birthday and, and then people started joining and singing and we had cake together and she passed like about a year and a half later. So I got to perform one of her last concerts. Music has really been an amazing journey for me. Postcards is made possible by the Minnesota Arts and Cultural Heritage Fund and the citizens of Minnesota. Additional support provided by Margaret A. Cargill Philanthropies. Mark and Margaret Yakel Julien on behalf of Shalom Hill Farms, a retreat and conference center in a prairie setting near Wyndham, Minnesota. On the web at shalomhillfarm.org. Alexandria, Minnesota. 
a year-round destination with hundreds of lakes, trails, and attractions for memorable vacations and events. More information at explorealex.com. The Lake Region Arts Council's Arts Calendar, an arts and cultural heritage funded digital calendar showcasing upcoming art events and opportunities for artists in West Central Minnesota, on the web at lrac4calendar.org. Playing today's new music plus your favorite hits, 96.7 Cram, online at 96.7cram.com. 